Uh, as many of you probably already know, uh, a couple of days ago, we have released Nginx with HTTP2 model, with HTTP2 support. So in this talk, I'm gonna give you a short overview of the new model and, uh, okay, let's start. Uh, actually, welcome to the new episode of Mythbusters. Uh, and the, first of all, I want to debunk some myths uh, around the new protocol. Uh, many people uh, think uh, many people think about HTTP2 as a shiny super, superior successor of HTTP1. I do not share this opinion, and uh, here's why: uh, HTTP2 is just uh, another transport layer for HTTP1, uh, and uh, which which isn't actually bad because uh, as a result you can. Uh, I use HTTP2 and you shouldn't change your application. Uh, you can, uh, it works with the same headers uh, and you can just uh, uh, switch HTTP2 in Nginx and Nginx will gently handle all the protocol stuff for you. But it's, HTTP2 isn't, isn't a magic. Uh, it does have its own advantages and disadvantages as well as uh, use cases uh, when it behaves uh, good and uh, also scenarios where, where it actually behaves bad. Uh, you can uh, think about uh, HTTP2 as a new version of Speedy because uh, it's a very similar protocol and uh, it was based on Speedy. Speedy is a protocol developed by Google a couple of years ago. Uh, and uh, Nginx uh, all supports uh, uh, Speedy already for two years, so uh, you can try all the advantages of HTTP2 by using just Speedy model. Uh, for, from just uh, from some point of view, just some polished version of Speedy 3.1. Uh, if you are not familiar with Speedy, I'm uh, gonna give you some key points. Uh, uh, and uh, this, this key points very, uh, this key points also true for HTTP2 and Speedy as well. So, because basically just uh, same protocol with some uh, difference in details. Uh, the first key point is that the protocol itself is uh, binary. Uh, I like actually binary protocols and uh, it's easier to quote uh, binary protocol sets, uh, but uh, and the good, uh, good binary protocol also have some performance advantages. Uh, but uh, I also understand the drawback of it. Uh, let's uh, look just uh, on the next slide. Uh, so you can see an HTTP2 request uh, looks pretty cool here. Yeah, and uh, as you can see, it's very easy to debug. No, I just kidding. It's hard to debug. And that's one of the disadvantages of binary protocol. You should use some uh, tool or, well, sometimes you need just read binary because uh, tool can be broken or the tool can, uh, cannot show you all the, all the details in, uh, in the bits or something. So uh, fortunately, most of you uh, can just turn HTTP2 in Nginx and never deal with the, its binary nature. But, uh, and fortunately, most of the requests will be handled by machines. You know that machines are much better in, in reading binary protocols than humans. But, uh, yeah, and uh, it's one of the disinvention of binary protocol. Uh, the next uh, key point of speedy and slash HTTP2, actually, is multiplexing. And it's better to understand multiplexing by looking at uh, an illustration. Uh, instead of sending and receiving responses and requests uh, as a separate streams of data over multiple connections, uh, HTTP2 multiplexes uh, them over one uh, stream of uh, bytes or one stream of data. And uh, basically, it just slides uh, different uh, data for different requests uh, and for different responses, and uh, each uh, slide has its 
on uh, identification and uh, its uh, size field. So uh, that's how the endpoint can determine which uh, data for which requests is uh, belongs. Uh, but uh, the dis disadvantage here is that uh, it's uh, since since it's uh, since each uh, since each chunk of data has its own uh, identificator, its own field, so it's uh, uh, some kind of metadata that transfer it with the actual bytes. So it has some overhead, uh, and uh, as a result, if you will just have one stream of data. Uh, for example, if you surf uh, some kind, some long movies or mm, just a big chunk of data like uh, distribution uh, of operating system or some, so if you have just one uh, stream of data, then uh, just uh, HTTP2 isn't a good protocol here because uh, all you will get is just uh, uh, additional overhead. Uh, but what are the benefits of multiplexing? The main benefit of multiplexing is uh, using only one connection, only one single connection, and therefore uh, you can avoid delays on handshaking uh, when you need to create one more request. Such delays are especially painful when you deal with uh, TLS. Uh, that is why the most clients now support uh, only um, HTTP2 over TLS. They, uh, and what, as far as I know, there are no plans to support HTTP over plain TCP because uh, there are not much benefit in it. Uh, so, because uh, TCP handshakes aren't so expensive as TLS handshakes and you can save much here on uh, avoiding multiple connections. Okay, uh, and the next uh, point about HTTP2 is it's a uh, header, headers compression. When, yeah, well, if you have very big cookies, uh, it can save you uh, hundreds of bytes per requ request or response, but uh, uh, in general, most of you won't benefit much from headers compression uh, because even a, uh, if you think about uh, some separate requests, uh, uh, eventually you should deal with uh, a pa uh, packet layer on the network and it uh, doesn't matter much if uh, you send a stop, uh, 100 bytes or 100 and, and uh, a half bytes. Uh, so uh, eventually it will result in one packet. Uh, but the drawbacks of HTTP2 header compression is that uh, it's uh, stateful. As a result, uh, for each connection, server and client should keep uh, some kind of state, and uh, it costs much more memory than uh, state uh, for uh, HTTP1 connection. So uh, as a result, each HTTP2 connection will cost much more memory. So, uh, and uh, the next uh, and the last key point of HTTP2 is uh, its uh, prioritization mechani mechanism. Uh, and actually, it solves the problem that was introduced by multiplexing. When you have only one connection, you have only one pipe. And you should carefully, um, uh, you should carefully decide which response you are going to keep to put in, in this pipe next. So uh, prioritization just solves the problem uh, that was introduced by multiplexing. There, there is no magic here. Uh, prioritization is optional in HTTP2, but without it, you won't get much benefit uh, in HTTP2. And so the HTTP2 model in Nginx uh, fully supports uh, prioritization, and uh, it does uh, priority-based on weights and priority based on uh, dependencies. Uh, and uh, from what we, at least from what we have seen from benchmarks, uh, we have, currently we have the, uh, currently we have the fastest implementation of HTTP2 at the moment. 
So uh, that's uh, all about the key points about HTTP2. Uh, uh, it's very here's a very boring slide. Uh, I'm not going to stop on it uh, too long. Uh, let's move uh, to practice. Uh, in order to understand how HTTP2 works under different uh, network conditions, I, I, I've done some benchmark, and uh, I, I, I get a typical um, web page here. At, uh, it's just uh, some HTTP2-related page that I found on GitHub. So, and you can see how many resources it has, and you can uh, see how large it is. I think it's pretty representative. So, uh, and here's my test environment, and uh, this slide, in case you, if you want to, uh, if you would like to reproduce the, te the test. Uh, and here is the result that I got. Uh, you can see uh, that I have simulated different uh, network latencies, and the me I measured uh, the DOM loading time. So it's actually a full page loading time when all uh, the resources of the page is loaded. And uh, from the graph, you can see that an obvious trend that uh, for low latency, there is no significant difference between HTTP, HTTPS, and, and HTTP2. Uh, for bigger RTT, you can see that uh, plain HTTP is the fastest choice. Uh, HTTP2 is the second, and uh, HTTPS is the slowest one. Uh, and uh, what about first painting time? For most cases, probably the most it's, it's uh, the most significant metric um, from the user's perspective because uh, it's the time when uh, they see something on the screen. So uh, it uh, doesn't in many cases it doesn't matter much when the full page is loaded, but it's a matter a lot when the user sees something. So uh, and the, we see here. Pretty the same trend, but the interesting uh, part here is that for middle range of tested latencies, HTTP2 is uh, even uh, a bit faster than HTTP than plain HTTP, but the difference is uh, is very small. Uh, so that's all about benchmarking, and uh, here's how to configure Nginx, HTTP2 and Nginx. Uh, it's basically very simple. All you need to do is just add a HTTP2 parameter to the, uh, to the uh, listen directive. And uh, probably the most complicated here is to get the latest version of OpenSL because HTTP2 requires uh, AL LPN extension, and the LPN extension is only supported by OpenSL 1. Uh, point, uh, zero point 0.2, but uh, we also implement, have implemented uh, NPN for HTTP2, and it works for most of the clients at the moment, but uh, as far as I know, uh, they are going to remove support for NPN with the speed. Uh, it means uh, in the early uh, 2016. So you can use uh, HTTP2 with OpenSL uh, version, which is uh, um, distributed by many Linux distributions at the moment, but you should keep in mind that uh, eventually it can stop working. Uh, so that's all about the configuration, and uh, probably that's all about uh, my current presentation. Thank you. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate. Uh, uh, you mean uh, implementing HTTP2 on the, to, on the upstream side? OK. Uh, so the question is, uh, will we support uh, HTTP2 on the uh, upstream side, or we support HTTP2 only the, on the <coughs> sorry on the client side. Uh, so, 
No, we are, no, at the moment we only support HTTP2 on the, uh, well, uh, I, so at the moment we only support HTTP2 at the uh, client side, so uh, we can work. Uh, um, so you, you can, now you can configure HTTP2 with proxy pass. And uh, actually, uh, what, uh, could you explain what the point uh, of HTTP2 on the backend side? Because as you can see from the graphs I showed, uh, there is no much benefit in HTTP2 for low latency networks. And uh, also in Nginx, actually, you have a keep alive model, and you can configure keep alive cache. And, uh, the, the whole profit of HTTP2 is to eliminate additional handshakes. And if you do it by other way, by keep a live cache, you don't need HTTP2. Oh. Well, uh, actually, we don't so support uh, forward proxying in Nginx. And uh, so uh, what I can say is that there are, at least uh, at the moment, there are no plans to implement HTTP2 on the backend side. Any other questions? So it seems no questions, but uh, if you uh, will have uh, more questions, you can find me on the Nginx boss. Mm, so that's all. Thank you.